Hey, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I'm in the Kia Telluride Supper Suite at Sundance uh, with the, everyone behind Falling. Um, I want to start by saying congrats on the movie um, to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to jump right on in uh, with Vigo as uh, the, the person behind this. This is your feature debut. That's right. What was it something that you had been thinking about doing for a long time? What was it about? You, you know what I mean? Like, when did you decide I, I want to make a movie? Um, well, not just my feature debuts, but just my directing debut. I haven't directed a short or anything. But uh, no, I had wanted to try uh, directing a long time ago. Uh, I mean, I have several scripts. This was the first one I was able to get put together, and it was the right time, and I found the right group of people, and luckily we were able to, to complete it. Yeah. I hate asking the generic question, but everyone watching will have not seen the movie yet. Right. So could you sort of talk a little bit about what it's about? Um, at its center is the character played by Lance uh, Henriksen, uh, Willis, the father, the patriarch of the family, um, a complicated person. And it's a sen at the heart of it, it's a story <clears throat> about the relationship between a father and son. I play his son. Sverrier plays Willis in, um, in the past, in, different, in the 60s and in the 70s. Hannah is Willis's wife, Gwen, my mom, and Jill is Willis's second wife. Um, and Terry plays Eric, who is my partner. Uh, we live in California. My dad lives on a farm in rural northeastern United States, and he's quite different than we are. And our family model, mine growing up, was a lot different. And so there's a lot of, mm, I guess, polarization within the family, uh, a lot of uh, conflict. And uh, Willis is um, in the early stages of dementia, so he can't live on the farm by himself anymore. He's acknowledged that. So he comes out to California. We're going to try and find him a place to live near me and my sister, who's played by Laura Linney. And when he gets there, he goes, what house? What are you talking about? He's completely forgotten or denies that he's going to move anywhere off the farm. So it's, that's part of it. That's how it starts. Um, I want to jump in. One, my, I think my favorite part of the film is the fact that uh, all too often in, in every movie that's made, you have the first three quarters of the film, there's a character who's a real asshole, and then in the final bit, <laughs> and, then in the, and then in the final bit, they do that transformation. So it's all forgiven, everyone is fine. Your character from frame one, basically till the end, is who he is. Uh, can you sort of talk about that aspect of the film? He's trying to make up for it by wearing that shirt, but I don't know if it's working. I'm trying to make light. Oh. I was trying to lighten the whole thing, you know. <laughs> hey, look, uh, when, you, when you get toward the back door of life, right, certain aspects of your, uh, you know, mental availability start slipping. So you can't keep track what you said, what's tomorrow going to bring. You don't live that way. You're living in kind of the moment. And it's not kind of, but you're living in the moment. And my son is pushing me to <clears throat> fix me. And every, anytime somebody tries to fix me, I get really upset because I feel like I'm perfect. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I feel like I know my life. I have a phone. It was a perfect phone call. <laughs> I, it is. <laughs> and I have, I have three horses that I love. <laughs> and I have the seasons. And I don't look in mirrors. I watch TV, but I don't look in a mirror. You know, I don't know where I'm at in all of this, especially this character, because he's got some damage going. You know, and life will damage you. It's not easy. Sure. Well, if you don't mind, like, if you just address the fact that the character is who he is, the whole movie. You know, like that aspect of the film that it's not some Hollywood, you know, focus group. You're, you're, you're saying Disney. It's not a Disney movie. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, is that bad? <laughs> no. no, it's not. It's not a you know, a family movie. It is, but it isn't. I mean, welcome, welcome. And find out for yourself. Uh, for everyone here, I would imagine making this was both challenging and fun and every emotion under the sun. But for each of you, if you could share maybe like a memory from the making of the film, like something that really stuck stuck out, whether maybe Vigo's working with, you know what I mean? Like it's something a good that. Idea. Yeah, good yeah. idea. Did you want to start down there? I will. I will.
we'll start. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole experience was special just because of, you know, uh, Vigo's words and his, his writing. And uh, there were so many special moments, but I got to say my favorite day was probably when David Cronenberg <laughs> was on set. He played a proctologist. So I was lucky enough to be there for that day, and Vigo and Lance and I. And uh, Mr. Cronenberg had some fun with a glove and some <laughs> lube, and, <laughs> and the jokes ensued, and the crew, yeah, the crew was loving it, too. It doesn't but, uh, surprise me that you picked that scene. Oh, yeah, no, of course. No, no, no. Of course. Are you kidding me? No. I have it emblazoned in my skull now. Um, but, yeah, that was a really special day, and uh, to be able to, you know, work with such legends, yeah. Uh, yeah, likewise, this was a very special experience for me. Um, hard to pick one single moment, but since I have to, <laughs> there was we shot a, a scene with Grady, who plays the younger version, the youngest version of John Figo's character, and uh, because Grady's a child, he had to leave at one point in the night, so Vigo subbed in <laughs> for Grady. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was one of the best acting partners I've ever had. <laughs> it was hard for you and Sverrier to keep a straight face, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I got his, I didn't quite get his voice right. I was it's trying to close. <laughs> it was four, actually, at the time. That's right. Yeah. I think for me, uh, Coming here and, and getting to dig into American culture and, and ride all those pickup trucks and, and, and ride the horses and, and go duck hunting and deer hunting and, and Vigo knows all about that stuff so so he was very helpful and, and gave me uh, uh, tips on how how to do it and um, uh, it was just I think the whole whole experience was wonderful to to get to work with all these fantastic people. I will have to agree with that. Um, yeah, we learned. A l I learned a lot on set. Um, the first day, or maybe it was the second day, I remember Vigo called me a big crunchy monster, if you'll know the scene in the, <laughs> in the show. I remember him saying to the little one, just look at the crunchy monster, and I was like, still like rolling, <laughs> you know, still in it. Um, but yeah, I, I learned a lot. I remember we'd come away, you know, come away from the set and stand at the monitor, and I just remember hearing um, Vigo actually working with another actor and he said um, he was like it's just it's just a change in weight that's all it is and I'm like I love that it was like the acting moment was just a shift in weight I was like cool I, I, I'm, I'm really happy w when I met him He's the younger me, and I did look good. That's why these, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you were relieved you know, that he was yeah, a handsome I guy. I was so ready for him to play me. And I went, yeah, I approve. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> and my wives, both my wives, I approved of them, too. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> Feeling and, pretty good. Yeah, I felt pretty good. <laughs> and, then, and then they had to see me, like, rave about something, and, and I thought, I hope they still like me. <laughs> they like you with or without that shirt, I'm sure. <laughs> I do too, man. I'm going to Vegas as soon as this interview is done. As far as uh, something that stands out, oh, there's so many <clears throat> moments. I mean, in a general sense, it was all the, the presents that you guys brought and the kids in the movie. You know, surprises, like, oh, I wouldn't have expected the line to come out that way or or someone to laugh or be moved in a certain way. Uh, the reading of a line, like things that you haven't thought about, just like when you're acting and the other actor does something, you're like, oh, whoa, now, I, now I'm really in the moment because I have to react to something I didn't expect. And as a director, I like that generally. A specific memory that I liked, we were having trouble getting permission to go do a shot where... Lance, by the way, the crunchy monster, she's eating toast, and she's the stepmom, and she's new to this family unit, and the two little kids, me as a 10-year-old and my sister as a 6-year-old, just staring at her. Like, everything the stepmom does is not right. So when she's eating toast, the toast sounds like a, a bomb going off. And they're like, how hideous. So I said, she's the crunchy monster. and yeah. But a moment that I remember was, a, there's a scene where... Lance, as he does a couple times in the movie, 
his character, well, I don't know if it was Lance or Willis, but anyway, uh, he escapes from our supervision. Or basically, he says, I'm going to the bathroom in a restaurant, and then he doesn't, never comes back. He goes out the back alley, and he goes down, ends up on the beach, and he spends the day there. And we're like, the water. And, and, he, and we're looking all over Venice, California for him, really desperate. And he walks out fully clothed into the sea, you know, smoking a cigarette, and the waves are smashing into him, knocking him over. And we didn't, we hadn't, I don't know if I should say this. <laughs> we didn't have permission. I said, let's just go swimming. And so obviously it was just me, Lance, and, the, and we had the camera in a hefty bag in case we fell in the water, and I'm holding the camera. It's just the three of us out in the waves. The waves have started to really come in. Yeah, he got knocked on his ass a couple of times, and I remember that. That was a really fun, great wasn't day, it? Man, great day. Yeah, you're a trooper. You're, 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 famous, uh, you're famous for saying one more. You got another one in you? You'd say, well, the sun is starting to set, and then all of a sudden the whole sky was like looking into a blazing furnace, you know, it was beautiful. Dark everywhere else, but that, boom. And so we go in, and I said, Vigo, you better stand behind the camera guy, because he's not going to see the wave coming, because those waves were coming in off of Venice Beach, you know. I mean, it was like really, it was a great moment. It really was. And, you know, I always have another one in me, by the way. I always. know you do. You're tough. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely... You you utter you say some pretty nasty things, and your character is uh, um, your character is pretty tough. How is it? What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that, that's basically his character, like, but, but way, way worse than that. That's that's like the G-rated version of your character. That's, that's the Bobby De Niro version. What's the I, matter with you? Right. <laughs> But but I am curious. What is it like? Uh, how how tough is it to do that when you're playing someone who's really like that mean? And you know what I mean. And like, what is it like being in those scenes? Is it ever awkward, or is it? Do you know like it, it must be a little bit tough playing someone like that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to look. At, it's hard to look at people when you're attacking them, especially actors that you really like. You know, you care about, and and Vigo especially. I mean, he's my son but I, I don't know how to talk to him. I mean, I'm trying to talk to him, and I'm really more commanding and demanding and those kind of things just to prove that I'm healthy. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But so the answer is it has to be done. It's a little bit like uh, doing surgery. You have to do it. It's not fun. It's not, it's not kind. It's brutal. Reality is brutal. And so I just took that on and said, look, we're, we, I know we're at war making this movie. We're at war, the whole thing. Other, other characters uh, in this movie, like him, he takes, he takes a lot of crap from me. You know, I mean, and I'd look in his eyes and it would hurt. I could see it hurt because that was the purpose. I wanted to hurt him. Lance is one of the most beautiful, gentle souls I've ever met. Anytime we had any like really oh, harsh crap. scenes coming through, immediately after we cut, Lance was apologetic. You know, it was, but everybody supported him. You know, uh, we I, all yeah. wanted to see him succeed, and it was a very difficult role for him to to put on uh, to bring to life. But everybody, everybody wanted to see him win. So, yeah, it was. It was beautiful to watch, you know, painful and beautiful, but that's, yeah, that's a slice of life. It had to be real. It had to be real. And Sverrier, we didn't care. <laughs> no, <it's> no. <laughs> we missed each other by about 50 years. <laughs> no, Sverrier had a very subtle stuff to do that set up the way Lance played the character later, little signs that things weren't quite right, just odd reactions antisocial reactions like the birthday party scene even the thing with you know simple things like my mom asks him you know uh, <clears throat> Hannah's character says do you mind turning the radio down a little bit and he goes and turns it off and she goes I didn't mean to turn it all the way off and he's like yeah 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 it's like he's very defensive he's not comfortable around pe he's comfortable in nature with his farm he loves his wife why do other people have to come visit 
<laughs> Why does he have to, you know, I don't think you even like going to the store. You probably get in arguments when you go buy farm equipment. Yeah, I, th I think he, he has a lot of love in him, but he doesn't know how to show it. So, so it comes out the wrong way always. I think he shows his love by, by working hard and, and putting food on the table. That's it. Every, every time I saw you walk in or out of that door, it always said labor. It always said, uh, I'm very good at labor. I know it. I'm going out and do some more. You know what I mean? You had that in you when you were playing the role. I could see it. And you don't know it. I mean, like, you don't, like, Gwen, you don't, uh, you never noticed it in a way. He was always exiting and entering. But it was all about labor. I saw it. I mean, I saw it when I saw the movie. The thing that uh, that I really enjoyed about your performance, and I'm curious how much is is that in every scene, I really didn't know which direction the character was going to go. I'm like with that radio scene, for example, when he shuts it off, I thought he was just going to have a flip out moment, you know. And but it's constantly like walking on eggshells. And could you sort of talk about that? Or he also went to work. He left. I, I didn't know either, actually. No, uh, uh, I, I think I think he's the kind of guy. He's he's trying to keep it together, but uh, there's always something like making making it hard for him to to feel at ease. So so he uh, it always shows in some way, and he he tries to to hold it together, but he, he can't really do that. And it gets worse and worse, and you see what what happens in the end. So so. Um, he changes a lot through the film. I don't know how you feel about it, Hannah, or, or you, Bracken, but to m when I was writing it and when you guys were playing it, it, I kept thinking about the fact that imagining what it was that it drew you to be with him, you know, as a man, what it was it about him. And I was thinking that maybe it's the very thing that at first was interesting. Well, he's very self-sufficient. He can fix his own tractor. He does everything. He knows how to fix the electricity. Whatever. He's completely self-sufficient and strong and very independent. He's not like any other guy in the area, in that town. And that's appealing because he's like, he's strong. He can take care of, I mean, even as a subconscious, he can take care of the family. He can, if anything goes wrong, massive snowstorm, the lights go out, he'll fix it. Um, and he's he's just not like other guys. He has his own way of thinking about stuff, and that's appealing. An individual, very individualistic man, um, a strong character. And the vet, that very aspect that attracts you over time is probably the thing that pushes you away because you realize, well, someone is that independent means they're not really interested in other people. And you might want to see your friends once in a while. You might want to have a conversation with him about something other than what's for dinner, you know, or let's go to bed, you know. Um, and so the, the very thing that's appealing, this strong character, maybe later becomes less, I don't know, I was thinking, that. I don't know how you guys feel that's true or? No, absolutely, and yeah, I think that that tension in him is what makes him charismatic, and yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's flattering to be loved by a person who isn't easy, you know, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, but then of course you know as I think it's, it's it's a generalization but yeah as people get older they become more ingrained and in their their characteristics become deeper ingrained and so exactly all of these th these things that had a little sparkle in the charisma becomes a, a, a repellent as they become further solidified in his character and and then he because he also begins to push people further and further away. And that's what makes him impossible to love. Yeah, I was gonna say he did such a great job playing Willis that I definitely noticed when we watched it after and watching you guys on set work, Willis did get worse. He, I feel like his lashing out got worse and you can see that in the diner scene when he hits the table and I think, yeah, that's kind of, even though it says in the film that Jill loved him so much to the end i think it was maybe yeah that little bit too much of aggression and and like meanness inside that she maybe couldn't handle when she loved him so much so it was so painful 
Um, on that note, um, I need to stop with you guys, and I'm just going to say, and I mean it, congratulations on the movie. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. Huge thank you to Kia for being an awesome sponsor, and I hope the film sells. Um, it's for sale, right? Yes, we're looking for, we're going to be walking up and down Main Street trying was, to get buyers. I was yeah. going to say, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I wish you nothing but the best, and I hope it sells today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.